Good morning, I am Jasmine Limani and I will briefly present you the work uh, titled Application of Model-Based System Engineering to Model Hierarchical AI Planning Problems in HDL. Uh, this work has been conducted uh, between Politecnico di Torino, ONERA and Isel Supero. First of all, uh, the main objective of the talk and the related paper uh, is to provide a workflow to infuse the designer knowledge in the HDL domain and problem files starting from the system engineering models. In this specific uh, study, we use model-based system engineering, but pure system I can be used as well. An important notion we can say is the notion of function, so something that describes uh, the behavior of the system. The hierarchical structure of model-based system engineering can be naturally translated in uh, HDL. And uh, during the talk, I will briefly introduce some important concept of model-based system engineering, HDL, uh, the translation, that is like the, the main focus of, of this talk. Uh, the case study where we applied this uh, model-based system engineering to HDL translation uh, and the conclusions and future works. I will start giving first some generalities about model-based system engineering. Uh, so model-based system engineering is the formalism used by many system engineers while designing and studying the capabilities of uh, complex systems. Uh, it is heavily based on SysML, a general purpose architecture modeling language that derives from UML, so Unified Modeling Language. Uh, we just added some skins to describe the, the behavior of the system. In this specific study, we use the functional layer of model-based system engineering, so the, the layer that describes the behaviors of, uh, of the system. And usually we start from some functional requirements, so what we expect the system to do, the purpose of the system, and based on that, we define high-level functions and then we break them down up till leaf level. There are um, functions that can be directly executed by the actuators of the system, the subsystem of the system under study, that really depends on the granularity of our study. Usually to analyze the flow of the function, so which function is before and has to be executed before uh, another and so on, we use the functional flow block diagram. So the, the scheme that is in this figure up here. And this usually gives the, the logical flow of the functions. Uh, to better visualize the inputs and the output of a function, we can even use the IDEF0, that is this other scheme here, that's really focused on the input-output of a function. Uh, so, for example, we can verify that uh, the output of one function is actually with the input of another, and that the function that has the output that is needed as input to another function is executed before, and so on. So it's a way to verify the overall logical flow of the behaviors of the system. Uh, now we can focus on the other main ingredient of this analysis, the HDL. Uh, so HDL language is heavily based on PDDL. It starts from the same concept of predicates and action, and it extends them with the use of tasks and methods in the domain file, initial task hierarchical network in the problem file. So the domain file is the, the file that describes what the system is allowed to do, so in general, the, the general actions and tasks that it can perform while the problem file is really dependent of each instance and so it depends on which goals we want to accomplish, which are the constraints and so on. Uh, so the new entries of the domain file, uh, this task and methods, permits a higher level of abstractions uh, because they do not have direct effect on the predicates like the actions. So the actions are usually assembled in different methods that um, accomplish a task based on different preconditions. However, even if many real-life problems are already built in hierarchical structures, so HTN planners, so hierarchical task network planners, uh, need anyway well uh, conceived and well structured domain knowledge to be used correctly. So we have to infuse in the right way the, the knowledge of the, um, of the designer inside this domain and problem file in order to easily find a solution and write them uh, in a quicker manner. And the parallelism between HDL and model-based system engineering is relatively straightforward. In system engineering, the behavior of the system is defined through functions that are derived from the requirements. And these functions usually have the structure ver plus, uh, plus name, like can navigate to go. Uh, function may have different hierarchy. From the high-level functions, uh, we, we go 
down to the leaf function. So to see the parallelism, uh, the task, so what we expect the system to, to do is our, our high-level function of model-based system engineering. Uh, the method, so how we execute this task, can be seen as a second-level function. And the second-level function are uh, decomposed and defined by some leaf functions that change the state of the system. Uh, so they can be uh, seen as action in a in HDL. Uh, the predicates are, can be seen as items, uh, so what can change the, the flow uh, and therefore make the, um, the plan advance, so going from one function to the other in the model-based system engineering analysis. Uh, the first step of the translation is to define the functional requirements that the system is expected to do. From this requirement, we can define the high-level function that will be translated in the tasks of the HDL domain file. Uh, this high-level function or goal functions are assembled in a functional flowback diagram, and they will define the, the first hierarchical task network in the HDL problem file. Uh, the high-level functions are then decomposed, answering the question, how can we accomplish this function? From different inputs, we can get different decomposition of tasks. Uh, and these decomposition are usually then again analyzed with a functional flow book diagram and an IDEF0 diagram to, to see the flow of predicates. And each of these different decomposition, decompositions uh, with a different precondition will be structured as omitted. Then we go and we analyze the, the sub functions. Uh, so if we can still uh, decompose them, we go back to the definition of the different methods for them. If not, we have some primitive function that we can write as, uh, as action in our HDL domain file. Going to the case study, uh, we have used the model-based system engineering HDL translation uh, to define the plan for a rover and a drone during the Igluna analog mission. Uh, this analog mission is uh, organized by the Space Innovation, uh, ESAT Lab Initiative in Switzerland. And the mission consists with these two different systems, a rover and a drone, that have to collaborate to explore our environment. Uh, so we started from the um, uh, model-based system engineering model of this mission, and we translated it in HDL, and we, we created a, a plan uh, for the two systems that were able to, to explore the, the environment, go to the different uh, points of interest, uh, take some photos, and do some science. Uh, so going step by step from uh, the, the, the translation previously explained, the workflow pre previously explained, uh, we have a set of requirements uh, that in our case uh, is a recognized point of interest, uh, take a picture of the recognized point of interest, uh, evaluate remaining resources, uh, release uh, the secondary system that provides the drone, and call, uh, call back to drone. So starting from this requirement, we define the, the function. As I say, usually it's a verb plus a name. And from this, we can define the, the initial tasks in the domain file. So the next step is to define the hierarchy of the high-level function. So which one is after the other and which are the, the predicates that are needed from one, from one function from uh, the previous function. And this will even help us define the initial hierarchical task network. And then for each task, uh, we go more into detail and uh, we search for the different compositions, so for the different methods, uh, starting from different preconditions. So the, the, the question is always how can we solve the expected behavior of the system? And then we, we define these methods. So then for each function in the method, we see if we can decompose uh, them uh, further or not. And if we can decompose them further, we add them as the tasks. Uh, in the domain file. If not, we, we have reached an action, so with direct effect, that's uh, going to advance uh, the, our plan. Uh, therefore, I tried to, to summarize this model-based system engineering to HDL translation. I invite you to, to read the paper to, to have a slower page description of the method. So the aim is to really fastly generate HDL file from model-based system engineering models because they are usually often used for mission design. Uh, more specifically for like space missions. Uh, part of the translation has already been automatized. Uh, mostly the domain files, so the task, the method, and the action are directly written in the HDL file starting from uh, the MBS uh, E uh, model, and they just need to be checked uh, by the designer. Uh, we are finishing up the, the coding for the full uh, interface 
difference between model-based system engineering and HDL. We would like, in fact, to have a feedback line. And so if we change something in the HDL model, we would like it to be shown in the, in the system engineering model. So thank you for, for your attention, and uh, I hope I was clear enough.